We think that it's very important um, that you learn by doing, and that's why we have these labs, you know, the carpentry and the fab lab, where the students learn, first of all, with sustainable forest management that we practice in this forest. So then the students learn about the whole process from extracting the raw material and then using it in a full-scale project. We also spend a lot of time, again, in the garden. It's like a part of the student's daily life to take care of the garden and maintain and produce food as well. Imagine a world in harmony with nature, with others, and with ourselves. A world where people are nourished by diversity and beauty. Do you believe it can exist? Utopia. Discovering dreams that are reality. My name is Essen, and I'm the academic coordinator of the Masters in Advanced Ecological Buildings and Biocities at Vidara Labs. Vaidara Labs is the second campus of IAC, which is the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. We're like a 20 minute away from Barcelona city center. It's a living lab where we see it as like a exploratory project for self-sufficiency. We see our surrounding as the key resource for self-sufficient building. So we're in front of the main building right now. This is the original house built in 1888. You can see on the top, it used to belong to a family. After we bought the property um, along with the house, we've done some renovations. This is where our students live and do daily activities like uh, the cooking and dining. It's on the first floor. And the upper floors are where the bedrooms are, so the students um, live there. And we have like the administration areas here as well. Underground, we have the fab lab and the carpentry and the auditorium. We mostly have pine trees here, even though it used to be an oak forest. Um, right now, the majority is pine and we have some oak trees still. And when we do uh, forest management, we choose the pine trees uh, to cut and to build with and we try to leave uh, more space for the oak to grow because oak brings uh, more biodiversity for the forest, basically. The mission is to, again, practice self-sufficiency and change or be part of the change in the built environment that we have today to build more ecologically using natural resources and using it consciously, training everyone in the built environment like architects and engineers and as well as sometimes developers for a more sustainable built environment. So this is the Green Fab Lab. It's a new structure but built with the, uh, the vernacular technique called Catalan vaults. You see the roof it has a vault system. And this is where we have all the digital fabrication machinery, like uh, laser cutters and 3D printers on one side, as well as all the, the power tools for building with wood. We also have a small like uh, ceramic station, we call it. We have a ceramic kiln over there. And then this area is dedicated for the students' uh, work so they can work with their laptops or uh, build models. And it's also the place where we assemble everything. So we have the carpentry downstairs and everything that comes out of the carpentry is assembled here. Or if they're too big, maybe they're done outside. So this is the carpentry. Um, we have all the basic wood machinery uh, from a bandsaw to table saw, planer and joiner. So once the wood that we cut is dry enough, we bring them here. Um, this door also opens to the back. And then one by one, we first plane them and use a thicknesser. Um, so we produce the, the wood that we can even more process and cut the length or, or CNC um, all the way in the back. And then through these pipes, you see, we collect all the sawdust. So yeah, through these pipes, we collect the sawdust and we have to change the, the bags pretty often because uh, we produce a lot of sawdust that we also try to find um, like ways to use the sawdust um, for other elements, like floor, like um, combining it with resin, um, compacting it to make furniture and things like that. At the end of the year, 
of the, each year of the master's program, we uh, design and build a one-to-one -one scale building collectively with the students and faculty, and they um, live on our land as well. So we're in the auditorium. That's also an extension to the main house. Um, you can see that the stone and brick walls are complemented with a new wooden roof. So we call it the auditorium because we also have sometimes big presentations, end of the year, or lectures sometimes where we invite um, students from the main campus as well. It's a, even a workout space for students um, because it's just like kind of free um, closed space. We have models from the previous five years that we've been um, collecting. Some of them are the physical models of the things that we've built, and then some are from the second term where they design a project um, in an urban environment that is usually for residential use. The greenhouse is, in a way, is the, the prototype, and it is currently being built um, I think it's the tallest timber building in Spain currently that's being built um, and it has a very similar system to what we've done um, on the rooftop. So this like apartment building uh, will have a greenhouse on top. We have a one year uh, long uh, program, we call it MIA for short, uh, Masters in Advanced Ecological Buildings and Biocities. First year program involves a lot of group work, a lot of collective um, designing and, and production. We think it's very important um, that you learn by doing and that's why we have these labs, you know, the carpentry and the fab lab where the students learn first of all with sustainable forest management that we practice in this forest um, or they learn how to choose what material they want to extract. So they select the trees that they will be cutting and we track the geolocation of each tree that they cut. So we're in the backyard, let's say. Uh, of the house and this is where we have our sawmill so once we cut um, our trees in the forest uh, with a truck we bring them all here and then we bring them one by one um, to our sawmill and cut each trunk of wood and then stack them on top of each other um, so that it can dry. Here you see some of the wood um, that is stacked and you see these colors at the end grain, basically, indicating the geolocation. So we have a system where um, each tree that we take out of the forest, we also um, take the geolocation of them. And then we do a color coding system, so with a variety of different like spray paint. And then even when there are planks, um, we number them and on a sheet of paper, so we can say that U31 you know, came from this X and Y coordinate. We spend a lot of time in the lab and in the carpentry with students, and they also get to know um, how the machines work and different techniques on like joining them, binding them. We also spend a lot of time again in the garden, which is a part of the curriculum. We have agroecology classes in the first and second term of the first year. So the students learn what grows well here and like which plants go good with what, you know? And then like crop rotation and harvesting, um, a bit of soil regeneration, because we're like a community living here. They usually come up with a system on their own where maybe a couple of them every day like rotate and wake up a bit earlier um, before class and like do some gardening and then start their day basically. Here you see our, um, our garden. So we have these um, two terraces that we use for our garden beds. Pretty much every student has their own garden bed and that's first of all their responsibility to take care of it but as well as um, they they take turns and they the idea is that we maintain it all together. And then over there you see one of our prototypes that was done um, three years ago at the solar greenhouse. As I mentioned like the every year we build a one-to-one -one scale uh, structure and this building, the solar greenhouse, was the work of Mayaba 2021. All the wood that you see here is basically, it comes from this forest that the students 
extracted and dried um, and processed and then built with. Even the, the window hinges that you see uh, were 3D printed here by the students. So it allows like, it to stay open. And we use um, sawdust that we have a lot of in the carpentry because um, we process the wood. And we use it in the trays so that it absorbs like excess amount of water. Um, so the plants don't like uh, basically yeah, swim in the water. It's a hydroponic system, so we don't have soil in here. Um, it's only water and then sawdust to absorb. Um, we have these growth lights integrated. Um, so every year with uh, whatever we're building, we have designated groups. So we always have some people working on the electricity system and some working on the water system, which we call building metabolics. The greenhouse has two floors. So we're on the top floor right now and there's another one below us where we have the um, tanks. So you see all the germination uh, trays. We have all the seedlings here and this is where we have the tanks that are, yeah, for the water that also goes upstairs uh, to feed the plants. The, the goal of this project was to enhance the food production of the lab, um, to have also more control space, but also to have a warm environment for the plants to grow even during the winter. We host around 20 students every year and some staff members stay here as well. We have a very diverse group coming from all around the world. I think people who also like choose to live here and be here are drawn to um, you know the forest and nature and being in nature and doing something like physical. On the weekdays we have a cook here so she cooks for us like uh, three meals um, each day so after gardening or workout we have like a breakfast ready which is like a really nice and then we have classes. We're in class for a couple hours but then most of the time is dedicated to like group work so even if there is not like a faculty member um, it's very important that the, the students then spend time here and um, talk to their groups and, and like have the, like productive discussions and keep working and using the, the facilities because it's, it's a great like tool to have right below your house basically that this place that you can just can you know learn from and like experiment with materials and yeah and then we because again we're like a community um, we usually like cook together eat together so this is a prototype um, built in 2022 by our students um, it's called the flora is again made of the wood that we've uh, produced together collectively. It is for a bird researcher to stay over the course of a couple days where they can do the research on biodiversity here as well as stay um, for a couple days. This net that the canopy of the trees surrounding and all the vegetation can grow on so that the space kind of blends in um, in its environment. These beams span almost 13 meters and they were produced by the students here. And you can see that it rests on four, again, wood columns. And on top of the columns, we have this core, kind of like a box that is made of cross-laminated timber panels and then covered with uh, cork panels for insulation. Here we go. So there is this rooftop that you can climb on top. Um, it's also where we have the solar panel. Um, it has a great view. And then um, these bridges that are, again, it was a part of the brief to design a structure that you can connect with uh, the surrounding uh, tree canopy and observe the biodiversity on the canopies. This is cork, but we don't have a cork forest here. So this is also something that uh, we sourced uh, externally. Yeah, they give a good insulation and it's a natural material. So we tend to finish um, like a wood structure um, that has a big surface with cork insulation. It helps with sound insulation as well as uh, thermal. And this is where you enter the core. 
where again a researcher would be able to stay for a couple of days and work as well as sleep. So the top of the place is like a bed space and down here is the desk and we have some shelves and all the furniture and the material basic was produced with the same material that is the pine wood that we have. And then you can see some of these holes on the on the wall that are like um, to observe the birds um, through like a hole. We have uh, usually like a um, couple of EU projects that uh, are continuing. We are also like engaged in projects where there's a lot of citizen uh, engagement. We work with like local schools. This happens pretty much every year. So we have a project like this where we work with students. We bring them here like um, couple days in a row we do work workshops with them. We always try to communicate with them and to see like what they would want to have basically. So um, we're in front of the quarantine cabin uh, which is also called the Voxel. It was built um, in 2020 um, during the first phase of COVID. The brief was to uh, create a space that um, someone could uh, quarantine for 14 days. So the basic amen amenity that you would uh, find in, in a house or that you would need during isolation. When you burn the wood facade and you make it more durable, they created panels out of that and used it on the layer of cork. So you have the um, two layers of insulation and envelope for the structure. They could also um, definitely check our website, Vaidara.net, uh, Vaidara where we publish and, and you put links to like our ongoing um, projects. Basically all the prototypes that we've built, trying to find um, alternative like solutions to our like um, built environment, you know, to change how we can build um, by using natural building materials. So right now we're in this part of the house that is going to be um, the site for this year's project. So the students are going to be building within the existing brick walls that you see. Um, we're going to take out the roof um, that is the existing roof and it's basically a retrofitting project. So right now what the current use of the space is uh, a CLT press. A, a roof over the CLT press. So this is where we produce our cross laminated timber. But so now um, the new purpose for the space is going to be a house for our new robot that we're getting. Uh, it's a six axis uh, milling machine. So it's going to be placed here. Professionally speaking, we have um, plenty of students who've joined um, let's say bigger scale architecture firms um, that have a big impact in the built environment, uh, but they also have like, um, you know, like sustainable sustainability department. Um, and that's like the main field of like for our students that they're like more professionals. And so um, they tend to choose these kind of roles if they're going to like bigger firms. And yeah, we have um, plenty of students who are doing their own startups or yeah, coming together with um, other alumni uh, from the program um, to do either more like temporary structures, but like sustainably built structures and buildings. Some tend to go back, which we also appreciate because they, they bring back to their country something that they've learned here. They do go back and try to merge like this vernacular like um, knowledge that they already have with more of like a digital and um, more modern like way of building. Um, so we combine them and we see them practicing basically all around the world now. Viva, viva! Utopia. Discovering dreams that are reality.